break in several cold cases tops our morning rush. APD says 53-year-old Paul Apodaca has confessed to being the killer in three high-profile murders from more than 30 years ago. He's also confessed to three rapes. APD says Apodaca claims to be the shooter who killed 18-year-old Caitlin Arquette. Back in 1989, Apodaca also admitted to stabbing UNM student Althea Oakley in 1988. A man with a lengthy criminal history is back out of jail after his latest charges were dismissed. Clayton Eaton was in court yesterday for allegedly swinging a knife at a Del Taco manager on August 10th. Prosecutors say that the victim was not cooperating even though she was served a subpoena, so they cannot move forward with the case. With some schools across New Mexico seeing COVID cases rise, the PED is now working to balance in-person learning while still remaining safe. This leaves the decision up to individual districts. Districts need to get their unique plan submitted to the PED by September 8th. Multiple organizations are warning Americans against more COVID-19 misinformation. Health experts say that online misinformation has made the anti-parasite drug ivermectin popular as a COVID-19 treatment. While that medication typically treats worms or lice but requires a prescription, the FDA is now advising people to not take that drug. Erica. Here's a look at the school day forecast. Temps in the mid-60s this morning. Fairly comfortable, may need a light sweater, and by this afternoon, it's going to be hot. Temperatures back into the mid-90s, so dress for that heat and bring lots of water. More than 13,000 firefighters continue working to contain a dozen large California wildfires. The Northern California Dixie Fires destroyed more than 731,000 acres, causing structural damage and forcing thousands of people to flee their homes. That fire is currently 41% contained. The U.S. Supreme Court is denying the Biden administration's request to revoke a Trump immigration policy. The policy dubbed Remain in Mexico was implemented back in 2019. It required immigrants who were seeking asylum to stay in Mexico while they await a hearing. The court voted 6-3 to three in favor of putting the policy back on the books. The John Lewis Voting Rights Act passes in the House and is now heading to the Senate where it may face a potential filibuster. The Lewis bill lays out the framework for the Department of Justice to identify discriminatory voting patterns in state and local jurisdictions. Erica. Here's a look at the Metro Threat Index. Fairly low today. It's just going to be hot out there, but dry. Starting today, Stone Age Climbing Gym is serving as host for the North American Cup Series Climbing Competition. The competition will be hosting professional North American athletes in three areas. That does include bouldering, speed, and lead climbing. You can check out the competition in person at the Stone Age Climbing Gym. The trial for the man accused in the murder of a UNM baseball player is set to begin today. Darian Bashir is accused of shooting Jackson Weller outside of a Knob Hill bar in 2019 after Weller got into a fight with Bashir's friends. Bashir has been connected to several other shootings, including a drive-by where bullets almost hit police officers. This morning, President Biden remains firm on withdrawing U.S. troops from Afghanistan by his deadline, which is set to hit in just six days. The president's hard stance comes after warnings from the Taliban to not remain past the August 31st deadline. Yet, there is also word that the Taliban is no longer allowing Afghan nationals to leave. This morning, improvements to a west side neighborhood are looking to make that area safer. A new street light was added to the intersection of Irving and Ventana Ridge. Neighbors say that for years, people have sped through the area, almost crashing into homes. They now say that since the changes were made, they have not had any crashes. Eric. All right, here's a look at the morning drive. Traffic maps are looking clear. No accidents or slowdowns to tell you about. And here's Tracker going east on I-40 near Rio Grande. Traffic's still moving right along. While well, happening today, visitors to national parks will get in for free. National parks and monuments across the U.S., they are waiving their entrance fees, honoring the 105 years since President Woodrow Wilson signed the legislation creating the National Park Service. There will be two more fee-free days this year. That's on September 25th and November 11th. Welcome back. On this day in 2002, overnight temperatures dropped to 25 degrees in Angel Fire. This was the coldest overnight minimum temperature in the month of August on record. And we are seeing some very cold temps up north this morning, so be sure to wear those warmer layers. Time now for the five facts. At number five, starting today, Stone Age Climbing Gym is serving as host for the North American Cup Series Climbing Competition. That competition will be hosting the professional North American athletes in three areas. That includes bouldering, speed, and lead climbing. You can check out the competition in person at the gym or online via the live feed on USA Climbing's YouTube channel. On to number four now, school districts which have been given access to funding meant to extend the school year and catch up on lost learning from the pandemic have not been taking advantage of it. In January, New Mexico lawmakers set aside $280 million for two different extended school programs. One program adds 10 school days to the year. 
The other is K through 5 plus, which adds 25 school days for students in kindergarten through fifth grade. According to analysts, about $217 million set aside for these programs is still in touch this morning. It will go back into the education budget for next school year. And at number three, despite some cool morning temperatures, we're going to climb about 30 to 40 degrees this afternoon, back into the upper 80s to upper 90s, even touching 100 degrees for spots like Tucumcari. So be sure to take breaks from that heat and stay hydrated today. On to number two now with some schools across New Mexico seeing COVID cases rise instead of forcing schools to shut down after four COVID rapid responses. The PD is now working to balance in person learning while still remaining safe. This does leave the decision up to individual districts though. Districts need to get their unique plan submitted to the PED by September 8th. Due to the recent COVID surge, they're now mandating masks for fall sports. That does include outdoor sports like soccer and football, with a few exceptions in some counties. And at number one, APD says that they could have a break in several cold cases. 53-year-old Paul Apodaca has now confessed to being the killer in three high-profile murders from more than 30 years ago. He's also admitting to committing three rapes. Now, police say last month, Apodaca showed up to a UNM police station and confessed to the gruesome murders. The first being the death of 18-year-old Caitlin Arquette. Now, she was shot in her car downtown. Apodaca was at the scene of the murder, but was never questioned by police. Now, as of right now, Apodaca has not been charged with Arquette's murder, as detectives are working to verify his story. Meanwhile, APD says that Apodaca also admitted to stabbing UNM student Althea Oakley in 1988.